Hi everybody. I hope that this is going to be a relatively short video on the flooding that is occurring in Nebraska as well as Iowa. I went to a neighbor's and the weather channel was on and they were talking about Nebraska and the report was that the flooding could continue for months. Months. Okay. Uh, it's bad. It's really, really, really bad. Thousands evacuated, farms destroyed, stores, whole towns destroyed. Now, Lincoln calls for mandatory reduction in water usage um, based on the threat of the Missouri flooding. 50% reduction in water used by residents and 25% reduction by industrial, commercial, institutional users. Such steps are necessary as the city's well fields are threatened by record flooding on the Platte River near Ashland. Remember aquifer. Just, just remember that, that word, aquifer. Okay. Uh, so they're claiming that the Lincoln water system uh, is unlikely to meet the average daily winter demand of 35 million gallons in Lincoln. And that's if things stabilize. Okay. I, I felt like I was reading about California. This is Nebraska. Um, urged users to think hard about how they are using water over the next two days. I can't imagine that this is only going to last two days because they are calling for more flooding. Guess what? Catastrophic flooding. I'm hearing that from a whole lot of sources. Catastrophic flooding. They already, they're presently dealing with catastrophic flooding. And when you think about all of the farms that are destroyed, eventually that destruction is going to be realized when it hits the market. And could this be a reason that they claim the economy collapses? I don't know, but man, it's bad guys. And I hope that if you don't have a big picture, I do have a playlist, U.S. Floods, starting back early 2018. These floods have been ongoing, and they're wiping out towns, they're wiping out infrastructure. A whole lot of businesses are destroyed, homes flooded out. And when you think about now the thousands that were evacuated, just in Nebraska, but we also have Wisconsin and Minnesota and parts of South Dakota and Iowa. Do you know how many millions and millions of Americans are in dire straits? So yeah, no outdoor watering, no washing vehicles, taking shorter showers, minimizing household chores, such as dishwashing, laundry use, uh, bars and restaurants, switch to disposable cups and dinnerware, water should be served upon request only, air conditioning in buildings is prohibited. Um, well, I don't think they need air conditioning right now, but doesn't it remind you of California? This isn't a drought. This is floods. Floods. Okay. I will link below to everything. Static in the Attic, um, not going to play the whole video, but I think you should click on the link below and listen to what he has to say. Major flooding in America by May. Economic collapse likely. This is Spencer Dam, the dam that went out. It's right next to the Missouri River. It's collecting water from this small little area here. Gavin's Point Dam is now pumping at almost 100,000 cubic feet per second. This flood, the, this dam went out last Thursday, I believe, Thursday or Friday, 
it's slowly making its way down the Missouri River and it's already closing roads down here. Um, I believe it's called OFOT Military Base, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's the Nuclear Strategic Command is inundated with water. So uh, our mainstream media is so derelict in their duties right now. They are doing nothing but distracting from the real problems that we have in this country. We're about to see catastrophic flooding. And it's not just me saying this, guys. I'm about to show you the reports on this. But you need to understand that we have all of these dams all over the place. The snow has not melted. One of them has already given way. And it's only March 18th right now. We have not even got our normal spring rains yet, and they are coming. Hydrologists with the National Weather Service are indicating a 25 to 50 percent chance that we see the highest water level ever on the Mississippi River in the Quad Cities next month. The Quad Cities are way up north on the Mississippi. Quincy is already putting in their flood staging, and every city all the way down through here is doing everything they can right now. Every black triangle you're seeing right now is a dam or levee flood control system that is already inundated and already flooding. Uh, this is just talking about uh, Quincy prepping, and they're north of the Missouri River that is flooding and coming down. Now look, it is a 90% chance that by April 22nd that we're going to be at major flood staging. That's a 90% chance that the river will be at 18 feet. That's where it's going to start cresting over and causing big time problems it's a 50 to 75 percent chance that it reaches 22 feet let me show you historic flooding 22.63 feet is the highest that we've ever seen that's a 50 50 chance that we are going to be at the highest level ever seen for flooding. Guys, we're talking about our farmlands now. We're talking about food. And this isn't the only problem. I'll get to the market bubble and all the fluff that's holding it up right now. We've got big problems here, folks. Yes, we do. We really do. And all of us are affected. But those in the flooded areas are you know, this is Iowa. Historic and devastating flooding continues to hit many parts of Nebraska and southwest Iowa. These aerial views showed the destruction in both states. We have teammate coverage of the flooding impacting other parts of the state. We start with senior reporter Todd Magel live in Hamburg tonight. Laura and Stacy, I'm standing in the middle of Hamburg's Main Street. I'm the only one here. That's because, look down the street, there is water coming from the Missouri River all the way up through town, past the flagpoles, past a barrier that broke early this morning, and into door-to-door -door all of the businesses here in town. Take a live look at Sky 8. This shows just how devastating and how widespread this flooding is. The Missouri River is actually several miles down the road, but thanks to flooding, all that water is now in the middle of Hamburg, and the town has been evacuated. Where you look, there is water, mile after mile of water surrounding the small town of Hamburg. The Missouri River is roaring out of its banks and shut down rural roads, interstates, and several other towns in southwest Iowa. This is the worst I've ever seen. I've born and raised here. I'm 55 years old. 55 years, I've never seen anything like this. The view along Hamburg's Main Street shows the devastation. A levee break overnight sent the river into the business district. 500 people have been evacuated. That's almost half the town's population. The water supply is shut off. The sewer system is not working. Most of the power in Hamburg is out. Rod and Peg Wilson lost their Main Street business where they work and live. We just had a short time to get 
essentials and dogs and us out the door. But the important stuff we got and the rest will have to be replaced. John Davis lives here with his 90-year-old mother. The floodwaters surround his home and car. It's a tough break for residents who have lost so much. This is the highest it's been since 1892. This is not supposed to be here. So it's pretty bad. It's very bad. We are back live with the Sky Aid drone taking a look at just how widespread these floodwaters are. No matter where you look, mile after mile of floodwater here in Hamburg. Now they're hoping that these floodwaters crest sometime tonight in town, and there's a good sign that that could happen, but it may take days or even more than a week for this water to recede. Then they'll get into town, assess the damage, and hopefully see if they can get the water system back on, all the power back on, and the sewage system back on for people to come back to their homes. We're live in hand. And I hope that that is the case. Um, what is going on? All right. Um, also, keep in mind, all of these people who have been saying never seen anything like it. The water came up so fast. You know, the Missouri is miles and miles away from this town of Hamburg, and yet it flooded out this town. Okay. They say it's like an island. There's no in and out. I want to go home, kind of get myself together, and then go help people. Hey guys, run some stuff out to the Centurion down here. Well, my parents are actually stranded here in Omaha, and uh, just want to do anything we could to help out. Fremont's landlocked, and they, you know they're running out of food, and I think everyone needs to do do what they can to help out. And I had an airplane that was sitting in a hangar that had gas in it, so I was just more than happy to help. They're telling everybody just grab what you can and get out. Naturally, to save a dollar, we didn't take out any flood insurance. Now we've lost everything. Really? But I really don't know what we're going to do. But all you can do is pull up your bootstraps and start over, I guess. How did you guys find them? Was he, uh, at the window? Yeah. I got three days with the clothes. Three days, because I, I was expecting to come back tomorrow. You got one broken window, but. That's mine. Sorry. I, the house is total anyways. Yeah. It's really, really bad. Okay, watch this. <laughs> The people of South Central Texas are fortunate to have a source of high quality, replenishable water underneath them in the Edwards Aquifer. It's a continuously circulating fresh water system that may be unique in its structure and functioning. To understand how it works, one must understand its origins, its various geological strata, and the way it connects to other underground formations. One can do that best by actually going inside the Edwards Aquifer. You can click on the link below and if you don't know how aquifers work just put aquifer in the search bar and you will come up with an awful lot of videos so take a look at this thousand gallons per minute out of a 20 inch bore the well sent a continuous blast of water straight up out of the ground to a measured height of 40 feet but even that record was broken in 1991 a well drilled in southwest Bear County near the Medina River produces more than 23,000 gallons per minute from a 30-inch bore. When the driller punctured the water-bearing Edwards limestone at about 1,200 feet, the surge of water under high confined pressure threw two 80-pound pieces of reaming bit back up the well along with large rocks. Today, this well is controlled by a valve on the surface to use the water in a commercial fish farm operation. The driller was extremely lucky here in hitting a cavern where permeability of the aquifer is exceedingly high. That caused the aquifer to yield an enormous flow of water into the well bore with sufficient force to lift heavy objects. Wells just a hundred yards away are not as productive. Many other high yield wells exist in the immediate vicinity, but this well shows that while all the Edwards formation is productive, 
Some areas are much more productive than others. All right. Um, I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this document, Nebraska Agriculture. And, well, this is where I learn that Nebraska um, has a very rich aquifer. It is, and here are all the rivers, okay, that are overflowing the Elkhorn, Platte, uh, Missouri. Where is that aquifer? Right here, Nebraska. Now, the purple color, the deep pur purple color, it means that it is the most abundant water source of this entire aquifer. It's called um, the High Plains Aquifer or Ogallala, Ogallala <laughs> Aquifer. Um, stretches through parts of eight states, but its most abundant water resource is located in nearly two thirds of Nebraska. My question is, could they be releasing that aquifer to cause the kind of flooding that we are seeing in Nebraska, in Iowa? I have posted videos on this bomb cyclone. I did mention in one video that the eye, or whatever you want to call it, of this bomb cyclone had been sitting in Nebraska for like 24 hours. That that section of the storm did not move. And then the storm actually started splitting apart, but that section sat in Nebraska. I have Nebraskan subscribers and some I have not heard from so I would like to hear from all of you <laughs> to you know make sure that you're okay but I have to ask you guys in Nebraska did you get the kind of rain to produce this kind of flooding because I think that it wasn't just rain. Now, I know that they do close the storm drains to cause flooding. I learned that when I was in Baton Rouge. I went down to Baton Rouge after the flood, I don't know, three years ago now. And I heard from the residents, not just one, but two said they closed the storm drains. That was what was causing all of the flood in an area of Baton Rouge that was not um, in a flood zone. One resident that I interviewed, I couldn't, uh, it was heartbreaking. He had lost everything, Hurricane Katrina. So he moved to Baton Rouge and he made sure that he was not living in a flood zone and he was flooded and everything in his home was out on the curb waiting to be picked up. So, in these little towns they close the storm drains. They release waters from the aquifer and the rain. Because it does seem to me a little odd that you would have massive flooding when you're miles and miles and miles away from the Missouri. All of these rivers you know, have flooded out, like historic flooding of these rivers, and yet the snow is still to melt. Yeah, they had some um, ice breaks and 
but I, I just sense that something else is occurring here. So please, you guys in Nebraska, what kind of rain did you get to produce this kind of flooding? Because it, you, I would imagine, must have had torrential downpours for longer than 24 hours. I mean, haven't you gotten torrential downpours and you don't have thousands evacuating whole towns sitting underwater? I'm just so sorry that I, I, I don't even know what to say because it's so heartbreaking to see this over and over and over and over again. And I wish, I wish that you know, I could bring Americans together and, you know, we could figure out how to help one another. Because more and more Americans are going down. They are going down. So, and there's the cat. And, yeah, I was, uh, I had a allergy attack. I don't have allergies. Couldn't stop sneezing for the longest time. Cat sneezing. Yeah, things are very, boy, oh boy, man, we are facing a lot of challenges. All links below. Stay safe, everybody.